what's up guys, Weevil here, back with another video, and welcome to part 3 of my top 5 decks of the format. Today I'm going to be talking about Mermails, and why I believe this deck can still be very much competitive, uh, based on the cards that it can side against the opponent, based on the fact that it can use Synchros and XYZ monsters extremely effectively, and that it has virtual toolbox type access, similar to windups, to all of these cards. And thirdly, because it has versatility, in that you will never see this exact same play twice in any given Mermail deck, in any given Mermail match because they have so many different cards they can set, so many cards they can summon, etc. And that is why I've always liked the deck. It doesn't have this kind of one predictable play in the case of Evil Swarms. It's just get out Ophion, protect Ophion, blah, 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 etc. The fact that I know what an Evil Swarm player is going to do often doesn't really help me, because usually if they detach their second material, they're going to have a character on their hand, for example. But that still doesn't mean that I can't find ways around it during the duel. So this deck basically reflects an anti-Ophion style of play. Uh, in that it main decks Stone Man Eaters, it main decks Abyss Dine, which makes it a lot easier to go into Tem Tembo the Percussion Gin and to detach his second material. And it also main decks Bug of Moon. It also doesn't main deck Dark, of Dark Hole, simply because Dark Hole isn't particularly you know, useful nowadays. Uh, it's not all that useful against Prophecies, against Dragon Rulers, or against Evil Swarms, the three top decks in the format right now, arguably, uh, alongside Mermails. And it's not particularly good against Mermails either, in fact, unless they happen to have just one Abyss Gaius on board, maybe with a Breakthrough Skill or an Abyss Sphere face down. Uh, then it's actually not too shabby. But normally when they get the Abyss Gaius out, the opponent doesn't have the Dark Hole because the chances of them having it are actually quite low. As we know, it's just one card in the deck. So Anyway, this particular build uh, is as follows. Three Dragoons, two Infantry, three Marksmans. Why three Marksmans and only two Infantry? Simply because I prefer to draw Marksman on his own than Infantry on his own. Um, two copies of Diva. I dropped Diva to two because it isn't nearly as useful in this format anymore. Uh, Ali just Catastor is no longer a play because it pretty much does nothing against all of the decks right now. If you leave Catastor on the board, they're just going to go into Big Eye and take it in the case of Dragon Rulers. Uh, if you leave it on the board against Prophecies, they're just going to Spellbook of Fated or drop a Priestess and blow it up. Um, and if you leave it on the board in the Mermail Mirror Match, it doesn't really do much of anything. Uh, honestly, they can just blow it up with Infantry or whatever. Uh, Army Arm is the best option, uh, in my opinion, because Army Arm enables you to get over Ophion, and honestly, the amount of times I've used Army Arm to get over Ophion is rather astounding. Uh, two copies of Abyss Goons, one copy of Abyss Lead, three copies of Abyss Lind. Uh, Abyss Goon is pretty much a staple. Um, I'm considering taking Abyss Lead out, but I like that 2700 attack against a Drago Sack, so I'll probably keep it in for that reason. Um, and Abyss Lins are staples, there's nothing more to be said. Uh, what makes Abyss Lind particularly good in this deck is that it can bring out Abyss Dine, which enables you to bring out Abyss Land again when Abyss Dine is special summoned by the effect of a Mermail monster. And assuming that the Evil Swarm player has no other monsters on the field other than Ophion, you'll be able to go into your Tem Tebow during the next turn, either bait out a bottomless trap hole, bait out a Forbidden Dress, or whatever the case may be. And if he happens to Forbidden Dress first, like an idiot, you can chain uh, the effect of Tem Tempo and detach the material. And um, Tem, Tem Tempo unfortunately does target. Uh, that is not the best, really, against an Evil Swarm. Something to know. Uh, it's not kind of like that safe zone ruling. As far as I'm aware, anyway, I could be wrong about this. And there is some, you know, obscurity regarding rulings between America and Europe, despite the fact that they're both TCG. There was, of course, that thing about Castor and Pollux a while ago. Uh, three copies of Megalo, of course, a staple. Uh, three copies of Abyss Pike and three copies of Abyss Tias, in my opinion, a staple. I see some people only running two of this guy, but honestly, first turn Tias plus Dragoons just sets me up for the entire game the majority of the time. Uh, two copies of Snowman Eater, uh, simply because he's an out to Ophion if they don't have their Forbidden Dress. And even if they do have their Forbidden Dress, I'd rather set a Snowman Eater and bait out a Forbidden Dress than set one of my Abyss Lins or one of my other monsters. Uh, I only set them when I absolutely have to. So Snowman Eater is really good in that regard. Um, he's not particularly good against any of the kind of meta, floater, beater type monsters anymore. Like he, Thunder King, you don't really see all that much of anymore. Uh, not particularly good against him, but... Um, and I can always side him out and side into my Sugiyomis or side into whatever I need to against a particular deck. But I still like Snowman Eater. I like the fact that he's searchable and that you can somewhat play mind games with your opponent where if you have him in your hand, he's like, oh, he said a monster. Is that a Lind? Is that a Snowman Eater? What is it? I don't know. Uh, it's actually going to be one of those two things, more than likely. And finally, two copies of Tidal. In real life, I actually have three copies of Tidal in the main deck and one copy of Stream, I believe, which makes it 42 cards. But uh, Tidal is amazing. Uh, it makes... This deck top, top deck so much better than it used to, and for that reason makes it more competitive in the sense that it can go into rank 7s a hell of a lot more easily than it used to be able to. Uh, as for spells, we have Heavy Storm, Salvage, Monster Reborn, Pot of Avarice, and Book of Moon. Book of Moon, again, an anti-Ophion card, and you'll notice that there's no main deck Dark Hole in this deck, and that is because Dark Hole doesn't do 
anything against any of the decks nowadays. It does nothing in the mirror match if they happen to have an, an Abyssal in face down or an Abyss strike or something face up. Uh, it does nothing against Prophecy because they have Spell of Wisdom. It does nothing against Dragosec because of course he has tokens and it does nothing uh, in the Evil Swarm matchup because they have Pandemic to protect it. So Dark Hole for me a lot of the time is a completely useless top deck. Uh, it's a one for one against Pandemic because they're going to use one of their Pandemics, big deal, but you're using up probably your most one of your most powerful spells in the deck just for them to use a Pandemic and not even lose their monsters. So it kind of sucks to be honest with you. Uh, unless you have a chain book of moon and put the monster face down and then it gets blown up because it's unaffected by pandemic, blah blah blah. Uh, same thing goes for the likes of Big Eye. Uh, three copies of Abyss Fear and two copies of Breakthrough Skill. Breakthrough Skill, uh, the reason I run it in particular uh, over Fiendish Chains is because it, it, you know, the likes of Blind Darkness Dragon uh, and Abyss Gaius in the mirror match and Drago Sack, other things like that are actually a serious problem for this deck. Um, because this deck is built around OTKing, and if it can't OTK the opponent quickly enough, it can't, if it can't get the monsters off the board, uh, whether it be by negating their effects and pitching infantries for Megalo, or whatever the case may be, then it is going to have a really difficult time. As for the side deck, we have one electric virus, two maxis, two MSTs against the likes of D-Fishers, macros and stuff, which um, you don't really see all that much anymore. Uh, two anti-spell fragrances, because I'm still trying to look for drawn lockbirds. Um, I'm, this is kind of based on a deck that I have in real life. Uh, two copies of Go is a match because you can side this card so easily and it does not affect you at all. Uh, two Imperial Iron Walls, by far the best side deck card in the meta right now. Uh, whether it be against Spellbook of Fate and High Priestess of Prophecy, or whether it be against, you know, Elemental Dragons, Dragon Rulers, or whatever. Uh, Tsukiyomi is purely against Ophion. Um, it is just such an annoying card for them because they either have to waste a Vader on it, in which case, yeah, it's probably going to die, but big deal. Uh, because then they just used up one of their Vaders for no apparent reason. Uh, or they have to waste something stupid on it, like a solemn warning. Or they have to have their Opion get flipped face down because, you know, he doesn't really have a choice in the matter. Uh, or they have to chain like a safe zone and then you chain an MST from your hand and blow up the safe zone and then they chain a pandemic and then they've gone like minus and then they, they really hate themselves. And fair enough, they still have their Opion, but like, who gives a shit? <laughs> and finally, two copies of Royal Decree for those kind of rogue decks that are trap heavy, such as, you know, template gadgets, stuff of that nature. Uh, the other reason why I think this deck is good, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is that it can go into Synchros and XYZs very easily. And Army Arm is a, is a really good out to Ophion. Catastor, as I said, is fairly obsolete. Uh, Dularen is an absolutely amazing card still, because you can still bounce your spheres, you can still bounce all that crazy stuff, um, and you can get serious pluses and serious attack uh, point bonuses. Uh, Black Rose Dragon isn't really as good anymore, I have to be honest. Plus the fact that I don't want Jennings Controller in the main deck anymore with Undines means I can't make level 7s all that easily. Uh, as for the XYZs, we have Tem Tempo. He is kind of the newcomer to this particular extra deck. Uh, and that's because he is a really easy out to Ophion if he's already attached one of his materials, which he more than likely has. Uh, Zen Mains being my other rank 3, as well as Abyss Strike, which doesn't really count because it needs 3 rank 3s, and I only bring it out with Bahamut Shark. Uh, Abyss Dweller, Bahamut Shark, and for the rank 7s we have 4 of them. Uh, Dragosec, 2 Abyss Gaius, and a Big Eye. Uh, pretty much it's all I've ever needed. So this is the deck and this is why I think Mermails are still good. It's because if you adapt them correctly, if you use the likes of Abyss Dime to bring out uh, your 10 tempos and you use the Snowman Eaters to bait out the Forbidden Dresses, uh, uh, and with a little bit of luck on your side, Ophion isn't really going to be that much of a problem. Uh, they could just top deck awesome, you know, they could draw Rabbit and 5 back row and just completely troll you. And this could be in game one, and then that would mean they would go first in game three as well, and of course they would probably draw the rabbit again, or they would at least be able to go into an OV on first turn. And if that's the case, then there's not really a lot you could have done anyway. Um, but I don't like to be super aggressive against any individual deck, um, and although my matchup against Dragon Rulers isn't actually that bad, um, because I can make first first turn of Iskaios just as easily as they can make um, a first turn Drago sack or whatever the case may be, uh, I still have sides for the deck simply because I can screw them over without hurting myself at all. I can side in two Maxis and Electric Virus, two Gozens and two Imperial Iron Walls, and honestly it won't affect my strategy whatsoever. I'll just side out Heavy Storm, Salvage, Pot of Avarice, Book of Moon, uh, my Snowman Eaters, or whatever the case may be, and I'd still have 28 monsters in the deck, and it'll be fine. So honestly I think the deck is still competitive. I think that it needs a little bit of luck on its side in any individual duel in order for it to do well. But if it does have luck, if it does happen to go first in game one, then it definitely has a chance. Just because of its versatility, because of its ability to swarm and OTK extremely quickly. 
Um, it does have a vulner vulnerability to max C, of course, which is main decked uh, in the likes of Dragon Rulers. So that is something you just have to watch out for. And, you know, honestly, it's lost me so many games. Uh, it's just very unfortunate uh, that I can't main deck Mind Drain. But um, anyway, you just have to kind of hope that luck is on your side in, in a certain, to a certain extent. And I do feel, you know, confident that Dragon Rulers and Prophecies, and indeed Mermails, though not nearly to a great extent at the likes of Prophecy and Dragon Rulers, will get hit in the ban list. And when that happens, I will be pretty happy, provided they don't completely nerf Mermails. Honestly, if they put Dragoons to one or something, I'm actually just going to flip out. <laughs> but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. And then... Uh, four days prior to that, Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn is coming out, which I'm going to be playing. And for all those who complain about fees and online stuff like that, you know, I've always been a Final Fantasy fan, disappointed with the first 14. So uh, anyway, this is a Yu-Gi-Oh video. <laughs> I'm going to leave the video there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the deck. Uh, any other tech ideas you have, anti Ophion cards, anything like that, please let me know. I'll be sure to check them out. Talk to you guys later. Peace.